all I, faculty. I enjoy it. This is our society. Right. And it will take me and you to mm. do it. That's why I always watch Johnny's Bite. <laughs> okay. The general watches Johnny's yes, Bite. Very, every day. Thank you very much. And Before. I is devoid of insults, mm -hmm. but straight to the point. Mm. Factual and fearless. Rahim. Hey, Charlie, no be joke. Oh. You know, the pressure joking. people like Johnny can give you. No, no. You know, get gray hair, you I'm, go get I'm, gray hair. I'm innocent. And <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That the pressure Johnny and his people, <laughs> mm -hmm. the pressure they can give you, you know, get gray hair, you go get. So your best bet is not mm. to have hair. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of that, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You will anoint my head with oil, my cup will overflow. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Juma Mubarak to all Muslim brothers and sisters. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's Friday. I am mourning my big auntie. So I'm in black. Now, this morning, I want to backtrack a bit on Agenda 111. The President of the Republic, Nanado Dankwe Kufado, is the height or the apogee of the COVID pandemic in 2020, announced that we're going to have 88 district hospitals in places that never have had district hospitals. It was welcomed. We're given a one-year time, timeline. And then we were told later that, well, we had used that one year that had elapsed to do feasibility studies. No, be so. So one year, we used that to do feasibility studies. We were planning and thinking, but the president had come to announce. One full year, we used that to do feasibility studies. Same one year, we promised the people, the young people of Ghana, we were going to do the youth bank. You remember Mr. Kenoforiata read it. And then we were told later that we have used one year to do feasibility studies. So now it's you start. Same concept. And when we said we we're going to start one year youth bank, we said we we're going to create three million jobs or one million jobs in three years. No be so. One million jobs in three years. Youth bank. We wasted one year. We came back. We said we used that to do paperwork and all the underground work. And now we're going to do youth start. A youth start is hanging on the corner of E Levy, which is it's in itself dividing the nation. But let's go back to Agenda 111. And recently, I'm sure you heard the, the Shamar chiefs. They are angry with President Akufuado because he came to Katsor. They may, maybe he has forgotten that he went to promise the people of Shamar that he will build them an hospital. It is not a good thing to promise people and not fulfill. I've told you, you like to quote the Bible. You like to sing Asem Papa Biamati Oye. And Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5 says, it is better not to promise than to promise and not fulfill. So when you promise the people of Shamar that you're going to get them a hospital, you must build the hospital for them. Same way when you promise the children that you're going to give them a warm cup of chocolate drink or chocolate bath, you must give it to them. We are celebrating chocolate day. Yesterday I was in parliament. They shared chocolate drink. When we had chocolate day, they brought us some chocolates. The children this morning are asking where their chocolate is. They're asking. So is it a case of Nana Dada or what? I know the president is not in town, but it doesn't augur well when you make promises and you don't keep the promises. And I think that for largely a political class, they get carried away when they see the crowd. As soon as they see the crowd, they want to make a promise. And sometimes I get, I get sad how a political class announce policies, sometimes even at funerals. And so most of the policies that are put up there, you actually do not see the head and tail of the policy because the policy has been announced just at a funeral for, for eye service, as they call it in the barracks. Eye service. We are doing eye service for people, for people, make people that my eye get. Say you announce something. But I've been following up on Agenda 111. Danny, take me to Nanton um, uh, District Hospital, how the project is panning out. And I want to show that to you. So that you know that we have an eye on the promises you made to the people. You said it was going to be done in a year. We are counting the months. But this is what the Nantong District Hospital, this is what it looks like now. Okay? This is what the Nantong District Hospital. So that's the laundry. Hopefully, when the hospital is done, it will have a laundry and, 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 and all of that. So this is how it's coming up, the Nantong uh, Hospital. This is how it's coming up. The people of Shama would have wished that they would have had a similar thing like that. But I say... 
uh, why the president ni refu kakra uh, ni refu kakra so tweet at him tag him join us by tell them we are back on air and let them enjoy uh, this but this is some good news they're happening at uh, Nantong in the northern region Tamale around that area agenda 111 it is happening so this is the progress work so far we will keep an eye on it I wish that all the 111 places would have similar things like that. This is what I have now. This is a generator yard, okay? So this is what it looks like, the Nanton uh, Hospital. And thank you very much to uh, our source up north for sharing this with, with me. So this is what it looks like, yep? Now, while this looks like this, I'm sure the people of La will also be asking questions. We had a hospital. We were managing it small, small. We were going there for a medical checkup. People from Osu, Teshi, Labadi, people from Nongwa area, people from cantonments, people used to come there. So it took the pressure of 37 military hospital and Kolebu teaching hospital. Now, you have come to break the hospital. And even though Mr. Kwekwajima Menu, uh, who feels very emotional about things, and leadership is not about emotions. Sorry, sir. It's not about emotions. I know you teach. I know you're a chartered accountant. I know that the president brought you in and he said that his KPI to you was to rake in money to solve the financial problems of the health ministry and the health sector. So in your first year, you were happy to tell us that you had paid NHIS uh, debt. You were happy to tell us that. So how is it that we are not finding money to do the La General Hospital? How? Where do the people of La go? Where do they go when they are sick? I'm still focusing on the Agenda 111, and I'm saying that even with Agenda 111, after you had broken their hospital down, you had collapsed it and, and demolished it, now people play football there sometimes. And one of the women that Bella spoke with the other time said, she will be organizing gala there. She said she will be organizing gala there because you are not building for them, so they have to make use of the land. Now, even after you have broken down their hospital, that serves quite a large number of people, you decide to launch Agenda 111, and in launching Agenda 111, you forgot about the La General Hospital. The people had the hospital going for them. No matter how it was, they liked it. No matter how um, uh, it was, they liked it. Like, who me have a song? They said, They liked it. Then you came, you gave them high hopes and promises that you were going to solve the problem. You collapse the hospital and that's it. You have vanished into thin air. It reminds me of the guy who was dating a girl. The girl jilted him and then later he traveled to the U.S., came back, got some money, came back. The girl fell in love again and then he went and he asked that, oh, uh, I want to fix your roof for you. Then he took uh, off all the roofing sheets of their three-bedroom house and then he vanished into thin air. Revenge. Are you punishing the people of La? Nungwa, Teshi, Osu? Are you punishing them? They are calling on you this morning, similarly as you're doing for the people of Nantong. This morning, as I've showed, and this is some good progress that has been made. But the people of La, La General Hospital, they are asking you, put our hospital back. Because it has a ripple effect. The ripple effect is that jobs have been lost. Those who used to sell pure water, uh, provisions, confectionery, those who used to sell food around there. I used to go and buy coconut from a coconut seller right at the junction, right when you bend. There's a coconut seller, fantastic guy, sweet coconut. It's no longer there. He's no longer, I don't know where he's gone. So all those places I want, Tawala, where people go and eat, they are after lunch and all. You have collapsed everything. So you may just be looking at the hospital structure. But the ripple effect, you have collapsed everything. Now you are mounting pressure on LECMA. The LECMA hospital, you are mounting pressure on it. Now you are mounting pressure on MANA. This was what the La hospital looked like. They liked it the way it was. You came to break it down. And up to now, you have not brought it back. You promised them, you gave them a timeline. No show. Promise and fail. When people call you, keep promise, then you get angry. But you are promising and you are not delivering. King, King, promise. It's not good. It's not nice. It's not nice. It's not nice, boss. It is not nice at all. So just like we're doing for the people of Nantong, 
Let's also do for the people of La. That's a simple message I want to talk to you about. Now, I see that the fuel prices are on the brink of breaking the eight. It's standing right on the line. Okay, shan if you know eight. Seven, nine, nine, zero. My goodness. Now, you promised that you were going to stabilize fuel prices. In fact, at some point, Danny, before this fuel matter, let's go to the NAPCO. Show me a NAPCO clip. Yesterday, Bella was on the street with the NAPCONians. And each time I hear NAPCO, I weep. I weep because they come here to come and ask us for as low as 20 CDs. That's their reality. Yesterday, Bella spoke with a 33-year-old man. And he was sounding like a boy because his confidence has been, has been depleted. His confidence, his whole confidence. That's, that's them. His whole confidence. His confidence has been depleted. These are talented young men, strong, energetic, vibrant young men. And they are all walking around and as if nothing is happening in their lives. They still live with their parents. They still go and cut their parents' bread. Then their parents would even say that the bread that they are cutting is making noise. They have become strangers in their own homes. These are people who have degrees, they have HND, they have diploma. Yesterday, Bella spoke with a lady who is a, a nurse, part of Hill Ghana. Part of Hill Ghana. Now, this individual said that the argument is made all oh, about my pain. You have not done your pin, and you have not come to do your biometric, and you have not done this, which is why your money has not come. Yesterday, she showed us her ID card. She has everything intact. She has not received her money. And even the two months that was paid, September and October, she was not part of the, of the, of the number. So you're asking yourself, what wrong did they do? What wrong did they do? What wrong did they commit? What wrong did they, did they commit? What did they do wrong at all? What wrong did they commit? What did they do so bad as NAPCO people that they have to be treated the way they are being treated? And I remember ahead of the 2020 elections, they were promised permanency. So when this whole argument is made out, oh, they were not promised permanency. They were told that not all of us can become entrepreneurs. Not all of us. You promised them jobs. Some of them went out of their way to campaign for you. I know that some people even had to contribute to a certain person who said he was collecting monies on behalf of NAFCO people to go and uh, give as appreciation token to the presidency. When you chat with them, they tell you. Recently, they themselves were circulating a picture of a young man out there who, who they said had come to collect monies from them, some 20, some 10 cities, some 50 cities, uh, to be used as appreciation for whoever. They said they were taking it to the presidency. Whether the young man lied or not, we don't, I don't know. But they were circulating it themselves. Hill Ghana, Feed Ghana, Revenue Ghana, Digitized Ghana, Civic Ghana, Teach Ghana. They were all there. We had modules for them. And we keep bragging that Revenue Ghana, for example, has helped us to reach our target. Why is government unable to share with us a sector-by-sector -sector progress work made by these Napcodians? To say that, okay, for Revenue Ghana, we put them out there into, into the wild to go and look for people within the construction sites, masons, plumbers, carpenters, whatever it is, and make sure that they are also being part of the uh, widening. Widening the tax neck doesn't mean that you are overtaxing the people who already pay tax. So. Widening the tax net means that you are bringing in new people who already are not paying taxes. This morning, a Mason will be paid 120 cities, 100 cities. It's more than what somebody in suit and tie makes a day. But that suit and tie person pays taxes. What does the Mason pay? What does the carpenter pay? What does the plumber pay? But they are the first to demand and say, eh, yeah, I'm buying see public toilet, uh, and this and that and that. How do you ensure that you are roping them in? That's the job of Revenue Ghana. I remember I asked a question about it, and I was told that that's exactly what Revenue Ghana would do aside other responsibilities. Three years after, three years, four months after, are we able to beat our chest to say Revenue Ghana came on, and this is how much they have been able to rake in aside what is already being raked in? That's the analysis. Because if your numbers are true, 100,000, we paid 840 million 
A year. 400,000 times three. Calculate that. If, now, if you add the 117,000 that they're talking about, it means that we have even spent more. Now they're asking you to give them the jobs. You are doing kwani kwani with them. And yesterday, they also alleged that they are being intimidated and threatened. And I say intimidation of any form will not win. Yesterday, Napco trended the whole day. With that Francis, uh, certain Francis, now whoever did that promo for government, uh, the Francis thing, uh, he says he completed school in five years ago and that uh, he has not had any job, uh, but he has an iMac and he also has a what, uh, a PS, uh, what, PS5. He lives in a cozy environment, nicely painted room, nice sofa and the rest. He has a flat screen TV and he says he's unemployed. Okay, first question. Who has been in power for the last five years? Who? You, you, this, this amounts to fake news, really. So somebody should be picked up. And that person should be made to refund the money. Wherever the money is sourced from. I hope it's not state resources. Who was in power for the last five years? Or he's pulling another TD Jakes. Who was in power for the last five years? Who, who has been in power for the last five years? Who? And if you are saying that you have created more jobs, why is such a person who is connected, cannot find jobs. Why can't he find jobs? Why can't he find a job to do? Why? Why can he not find a job to do? That's a simple question. Now, if he's unemployed, he has a, a, a sweet apartment, he has PS5, he has iMac, and you could actually see, it looks like a dada, but it means that then his father perhaps died and willed it to him. You have been unfair to the NAPCO beneficiaries. You use them for campaign. You told them to remember you. And the remembrance will mean that once they remembered you, you will sustain their jobs. Now you are threatening them. And you know, interestingly, the Metro Department that wrote the letter to say, if you're a NAPCO personnel and you don't come to work, when opportunities come, you will not get a, a, a chance at it or a shot at it. They themselves, they are on strike now. What is the reason? They are fighting for their own conditions of service. They were a few weeks ago threatening people that if you don't come to work, you will not get an opportunity and, and a shot at it. The Napconians were complaining about, uh, what do you call it, their terms of con conditions of service. They were saying that they didn't have money to be able to uh, uh, transport them, them, themselves to and from work. They didn't have anything to spend for lunch, for breakfast, for dinner. Yet you wrote that letter. I don't know who pushed you. Now you yourself, Ghana Meteorological Agency, you are on strike. Now you yourself, you are on strike. And you see, yesterday, reading from social media and having other conversations, I got the sense that well, people think that the Ghana Meteorological Agency, sorry, the Ghana Meteorological Agency really is not as important as we may assume. So they are just looking at weather report, the Steve Nakote Kwao days. Well, that's not all they do. Remember that your president is out of the country. Our president, he is out of the country on a chartered flight. It takes the metro department to give clearance that the plane can fly in or out. So, if the one in the tower is on strike and your president is out there, could it be possible that your president will work out? If metro is on strike and they are not giving you know, clearance from the tower, they are not giving clearance from the tower. Do you think your president can come home? Well, they've started their strike today. Now, let's get back to fuel prices and wrap up. A fuel prices have gone up. And, and the, the shock that it brings to you is like the full force of a thunderbolt. The shock that the fuel price increases brings to you. I've even lost count of how many times fuel prices have gone up. And when you talk about it, they tell you there's a global price or we have deregulation, da 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 We are still paying legacy debt or whatever it is, uh, uh, levy or tax on, on fuel. Baller tax is there. COVID tax is there. A bigger chunk of our fuel price buildup is because of the tax components that we have, that this government has imposed on us. Tax component. So there's the global price, there's your tax component, and there's your weak CD that Dr. Baumia has kept quiet about. He formed the 40-member FX committee. Where are they? 
We were told that they were going to look at how to stabilize the city and make it stronger. Da, 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 da. Plenty English can promise. Now here we are. Here we are. Fuel prices have gone high. The drivers are threatening. Today, they said they are going to increase their fares by 30%. Do you know what that means? That means your delivery. That means your trotro fare. That means the price of everything will go up. Because fuel affects everything. Danny pulled a picture of the MPP activists for me. When we were asking government to show their scorecard ahead of the 2020 elections, they showed us this. They showed us this picture. They said, we promised to stabilize fuel prices. We have delivered. Delivered to who? Where? How? How did you deliver? How did you deliver? We promised. No, no, no. Show me this picture. We promised to, yes. We promised to deliver to stabilize fuel prices. We have delivered. Tell that to the Marines. You have delivered where? You have delivered where? The fuel prices are hitting us every single day. They are hitting us every single day. And sometimes I even feel for, then you open the folder for me. Sometimes I even feel for uh, national service personnel. 559 Ghana cities. Everything is going up. The allowances have remained stuck. NAPCO, everything is going up 699.25 pesos. Now, this is what it looks like. Our present situation in this country, this is what it looks like. Can you open that for me? That's our final photo. This is what our situation looks like. Fuel has gone up, everything is going up, uh, even utilities are going up. So this is salary sitting behind expenditure. Your salary is small like this. It is holding on to expenditure. On a motorbike without a helmet. It's a dangerous situation. And Nigeria, Osama will say, my life is in dangerous. This is our situation. And when you talk, they say, don't talk. When you talk, they say, shut up. When you talk, they blame everything on COVID. Are we the only country that was hit by COVID? Most of the countries that are recovering very fast from COVID don't have gold, don't have timber, don't have bauxite, don't have oil, don't have coffee, don't have share, don't have all the things that we have. We are mismanaging things and telling people not to cry. It's like beating your child, me beating your brain and telling him to shut up, don't cry. How? This is our situation. Let it stick in your mind. Tweet at them. Hashtag it, Johnny's Bite. I'll see you on Monday. Good morning.